I thought it'd be a good idea if I start this video off with a bit of an introduction. You see, most of the videos I do tend to be longer form and they'll go into maybe the history of a particular kind of technology and demonstrate various aspects of it. Whereas sometimes I just want to keep things simple and do what Americans would call a show and tell. I've got plenty of interesting and cool objects around here that don't really fit into any great narrative. However, I'd like to demonstrate them to you because I'm sure you'd find them interesting as well. So in the first of these videos, which I'm going to call Design Classics, we're going to be talking about the Panasonic SG-515. So here we go. A big old transistor radio, but don't switch off yet. There's more to it than that. We'll pull up the area low and just have a listen to this first off. Click this nice switch up. There you go. Nice solid movement on that one. And as you can see, we can tune into radio as you'd expect. I don't get a particularly good reception where I live. So this does seem to be pulling in some nice strong signals. It also has AFC, which is auto frequency control, which will lock onto those signals, stop them drifting away. But as you can hear, it's got a pleasant enough sound to it, a decent tone, it's a pretty good radio and it's also got a little light here which we can push down so we can tune it in the dark. The volume goes a reasonable loudness but I could do with probably deoxidating those um, controls. Is deoxidated the word or is it deoxidizing? Anyway you know what I mean, deox, need to clean those up. But anyway this is what we're interested in. Look, FM, AM and pH. Hold on, what's pH? Well, let me show you. Pull down this little lever here and there it is. The pH is a phonograph or more commonly referred to nowadays as a record player or a vinyl player if you want to wear a beard. So there you go. Look at that. Right now let's get it going. So to get it going you pull out the little toad arm out of the back. It's held in with a clip there for transportation. So move it out to the front and we'll put a record on here. You don't have to just put singles on though. I'm putting a full size album on here. Let's just have a quick listen to it for a second. Now, of course, the sound quality doesn't match up to a high end turntable plugged into a home hi fi, but for a portable device that you can take around and run off batteries, you know, it's not half bad. Now it's a completely manual turntable. Once the stylus reaches the center of the disc you have to lift up the toad arm and move it back to the beginning again. I want to show you something else. It's got auto set. Now what's auto set? Well if you look at the center of the platter there's three triangles there. Now those are buttons. When you push them down by putting a 33 and a third RPM LP on top of those that's the speed that the deck runs at 33 and a third because it senses that there's a disc on top pushing those down however if you were to take that off and then replace it with a single which clears those three triangles leaving them in the upward position it plays at 45 rpm <laughs> Now, as helpful as auto set might seem, it's actually a hindrance to people in the UK because 45 RPM records here don't have a big hole in the middle and therefore play too slowly. Now, before anyone feels the need to write in and tell me all about jukebox dinkers and how you can pop a hole in the middle of a UK disc to fit on a US player or in a jukebox, I know all about that stuff. I don't plan on doing it because I've only got a few 45s and I'm not going to mess with them just so I can play them on this portable device. However, I wanted to show you the mechanism and also mention it because, of course, that demonstrates that this is a device that was designed for the US market. I did import it from a chap in Germany, but originally it had been sold to someone in the US and, of course, being Panasonic. It originated in Japan. I think that the design of this is really quite smart. You wouldn't be aware from looking at this that it's capable of playing a full-size 12-inch record. It hides those capabilities away very neatly, as it does the handle, which you can see here needs to be nice and strong to hold the thing. It's pretty heavy to carry around, but that stows away nice and smoothly in the back there. And of course we've got the antenna here on the right-hand side for the radio. Now if we also have a look down the bottom, you can see there's little compartment. If we push those clips down and open that up, inside there is the US power supply. 120 volts of course. And you've got a little hole in that door so you can pull that wire out of the bottom and put the door back on. 
Inside the top door is where you'll find the batteries. Now, they might look strange, but it just runs on six D cells. The thing is, they're held inside these plastic tubes that came with the machine. Uh, those hold them together and stop them popping out when you're trying to put them back in. I think that's a very neat design. I'm surprised I haven't seen that kind of thing in other machines. Now, the door on that, again, just like the bottom one, holds it nice and secure with these two clips at the top. Now, if we look at the bottom left, you can see that there's an output there for an additional speaker, an external speaker. And also on the front, we've got a head Headphone output. Now the headphone output is stereo. Despite the speaker on the thing itself being a mono speaker, if you were to plug headphones into this you can listen to your records played in stereo. Now I've been on the hunt for one of these stowaway Panasonic record players for a couple of years after I'd seen it whilst looking for something else. I thought it'd be a nice thing to pick up. But the model I ended up getting was slightly different to the one I've been looking for all that time. You see, the one I'd seen had been the Panasonic Swingway. The model number for that is the SG610. Remember, I picked up the SG515. Now, you might think for those numbers that mine's a lower down version or the older version, but it's actually the other way around. Swingway, by the way, doesn't make much sense. I think it should be swing our way. I think that's a translation error uh, somewhere along the lines. But if you look at the original one, we've got the circular dials on the top here. It's got the word solid state on there. Those are all kind of old fashioned type things. Whereas mine's got those slider switches on the front. They've done away with the solid state emblem as well, which kind of indicates it's a later model, much like a classic car. You can kind of tell when electronics are from depending on what kind of emblems and things they've got on them anyway the model that i got the sg515 the first adverts i found for that were from 1970 now the earlier one the panasonic swingway i've seen adverts for that from 1967 but i think it might have been introduced in 1966 Given the recent vinyl resurgence, I could see something like this making a comeback. Imagine a modern day version of this with decent battery management technology, lithium cells, energy efficient motors, decent quality speakers, perhaps a digital radio, Bluetooth, who knows? I'm no marketing expert, but what I do know is that this was a design classic and I hope you've enjoyed having a look at it here today. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. Blah, blah, blah. I'm so interesting. Look at all the cool things I own. I'm the most interesting man in the world. In other words, I got drunk, I bought stuff on eBay that I don't really need. I'm trying to justify it by making videos about it. Hmm. <sighs>